finally caught up with your matrix demoted, digital theft, online breaches of privacy, and we followed the trail of toys you threw out of a pram. Your days in Rebel Outpost are numbered. But what's it going to take to make you talk? Stop lying to us by saying that wakey wakey joker is on a luxury yacht in the Bahamas from just a few crappy keychains. We know you'll talk soon, because just a couple of days in our bunker without your narcotics, you're going to be putty in our hands. Do you know who I am, Mr. Wally? A Darwinist. A monkey globehead. The Antichrist. Look, I'd like to help you if I could, but I haven't seen any curvature. You see that? <coughs> and smart, doesn't it? In the chance you're in the dark about some of this, let me shed some light. What are you globeheads talking about? You know, I don't believe you. That's of minor importance. You just wait a minute and listen to me. I haven't seen curvature in all my years. So help me God. Ah! Oh! You know, great liars. I learned the pantomime. Tell me, before I do some damage, you won't walk away from. You're a globehead, huh? Cecilia. <laughs> you know, I read a lot, especially about flat earth, history, your ball earth train wreck. I find that shit fascinating. It's a fact. I don't know if you know or not. Globeheads were spawned by monkeys. Come again? <laughs> no, it's it's a fact. Globeheads had ape blood pumping around their hearts. If you don't believe me, you can look it up. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, the flat earthers were everywhere. And the globeheads are monkeys. You see, way back then, apes did so much fucking with the globeheads, the flat became a curve. You know, it's amazing to me to think that to this day, hundreds of years later, that globeheads still carry that monkey gene. No, I'm, uh, no, I'm quoting. It's history. It's written. It's a fact. It's written. I know this guy. No. guy. No. <laughs> Your ancestors are monkeys. Uh, and. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, and. Your great 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 grandmother fucked a monkey. Oh. Yeah, 
She had half globe head kids. Now, if that's a fact, tell me, am I lying? Because you, you're part monkey. <laughs> I know, love, but you shouldn't be eating that much sugar anyway. Yes, I'll admit, I am looking at flat earth stuff. You're going to have to deal with it. That's more meaning than all the, ma all the makeup magazines you bought just now. What? You seriously want some aspartame to put on your cornflakes and in your tea? Ugh. No, no, it's not a healthy sugar substitute. Oh my god. No, and nor is fructose or saccharin. You know this isn't a gender of our controllers. Right, if, if you're gonna nag, I'm gonna wait outside. I'm not bothered what your mum said about my flat earth videos. Yep, I, I know you and her are attached to the ball, I know. Yep, you told me your sister is worried about you being with me, I know. But it's still flat. Okay, I'll wait outside. Where's the drink section? Come bring your children to play in our new swimming pool at Air Bubble Avenue. Weekday mornings, one lane closed due to NASA filming. Superlight Superglue. We can attach a 100 ton space shuttle via a small metal pin lock to a 747 aeroplane, withstanding high winds, a takeoff, and turbulence at altitude. Don't believe the truths. Buy Superlight Superglue at all your favourite corporate megastores. Authentic selfhood. All you need is some nature, some solitude, conscious breathing, and awareness focused on the beauty around you. Unfortunately not currently available to all humans due to mass iconic attack. Have you got $8 million through deceiving the American public into globalism? Have you got too much cash through deception to put under the pillow? Use our Illuminati-friendly offshore bank account service and we can divert straight from the IRS into your Black Ops projects whenever you want, wherever you want. Your secret's safe with us, Globehead controllers. Terms and conditions don't apply and money can be created out of thin air. A position has opened up at the Flat Earth Rebel Outpost. Applicants must enjoy Flat Earth comedy and creativity and not take themselves too seriously. Preferably, the applicant is a self-sufficient human with over zero dollars to their name and without addictions. The HR department states this can create a drain upon Flat Earth Rebel Outpost time, energy, and resources. Package for successful applicant. Wages, none. Wages in advance, none. Wages in advance if toys are thrown out of a pram, none. Note, the Rebel Outpost is a piece of remote land owned by Flat Earth Rebel Outpost creator, not a small dark bedroom in a parent's house. Healthcare, shamanic. Holidays are everyday. Shares, we float not on the stock market, but on the giddy vibrations of truth, justice, karma, laughter, and unity. I have a further two vacancies. First vacancy is Control Room Operator, European Space Agency, Hours None, Enthusiasm None. Second vacancy, Control Room Operator, NASA, Hours when required in Hollywood. Enthusiasm, far too much. Acting experience, welcome.
monkey, you have to step up and help out at the flat earth. Go away, cat. Having a meeting. Okay, monkey, you have to step up and help out at the flat earth hospital now. I'm ready, Dr. Wakey. I heard the CIA captured Dr. Matrix. Yes, they did. Something to do with the pram not having any toys in it anymore. Oh, it's a good job I wasn't in it then, isn't it? Yes, monkey. I found Mars in Sagittarius quite hard to work with. Monkey, don't bring up astrology because people will think I'm trying to sell stuff. People don't like that, especially with all the lies going around. Can we do some flat earth hospital serious stuff now, Dr. Wakey? Yes, monkey, we can do whatever we want now. Hey, what were they talking about in Globe Fiction earlier? Oh, what's this? What's he doing? Go away! Go away! Go away, you! I'm on camera, it's Rose filming! Hey, what were they talking about in Globe Fiction earlier? About monkeys having sex with globe heads? Ugh! That sounds disgusting. Don't concern yourself with these matters, monkey. Stay away from television and toxic movies. They're not good for your energy. And they are there to lower your vibration. Let's go and see our real patient. Yay! <laughs> At the Flat Earth Hospital, we also have some serious cases. Uh, this is James, which isn't his real name. He's a fully recovered globe head. James, how did you come across the Flat Earth Theory and how did you heal from your globalism? Well, like most important information I uh, stumbled across, I stumbled across this on the uh, on YouTube. I can't even remember what I was looking for, but I noticed in the sidebar there were some Flat Earth videos. Of course, I initially thought that... Uh, Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I was, my interest was peaked, so I had, I had a quick look and flicked through one of the videos and some interesting points were raised. Uh, so I watched the whole video and it was, the feeling was mind-blowing. It's like, they, they've raised some serious, serious points here that I, I cannot explain off the top of my head. It make no, no sense whatsoever. Um, it took a few weeks to get 100% flat earth, or was it like you felt something there and there? No, no, I, um, uh, I instantly downloaded some more videos. There was one in particular by Dave Murphy, <coughs> who I'd come across before. And I know he's, he's a good researcher and, he, and he, he's provided excellent information, correct information on everything I've ever looked at with him. And um, I watched his video and it just totally sunk in with me. Um, so I, I didn't 100% didn't wake up that day, but I had a good think about it over the next few days and started watching some more videos, and your videos among them, and the more I watched these videos, it, it became more and more obvious that we could lie to, you know, truly is flat, <laughs> you know, and the globe stuff is just a fabrication. Yeah. And then since then, it's like, you see stuff on the news or satellite pictures, and it just looks more and more silly, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Preposterous, even. Absolutely preposterous. And you've been here doing a, a pretty long water fast, haven't you? It's something you're a bit of an expert on. Yeah, uh, what, yeah. What are the benefits of water fasting? Because a lot of people think it's a crazy thing to do. Well, the benefits of any fast <coughs> are, are fantastic. But if you, if you do it with, with, with as much water as you can, then it increases the effect many times. Uh, I'm on day 14 at the moment and I feel fantastic. My energy levels have risen back to their normal level even though I'm hardly taking any nutrients. I'm having a, um, some lemon juice and water, maybe four or five drinks a day uh, and I feel totally normal. Yeah, and I've seen a great improvement in your, in your health and yeah, appearance. Yeah, my, yeah. Water <coughs> is the um, universal solvent of life. Basically, it's, it's, it's a universal cleanser. Um, most people are totally deficient. Yeah, people think drinking tea or drinking a soft drink is the same, but it's not. Is it? You not, have to drink no. pure water. Yeah, the body handles uh, the water content in tea, uh, drinks like tea and coffee and sodas completely different. 
to, to how the body um, um, processes water and when it's drunk and eats. Is it true to say that when we're doing a water fast, the body will then, because it's got no food, it'll start to eat itself and it'll eat all the rubbish in our body first, hence we heal? Yeah, yeah, that's one aspect of it. But also, <coughs> um, the more water you put in, uh, the, the more the water will help to pull the garbage out. Um, the best type of water to use for that is distilled water. Uh, but you can use tap water, even though I wouldn't recommend it. You can use filtered water, which is better. You can use reverse osmosis, which is, which is second, but the top, the top method to use is distilled water if you really want to go to town. Yeah. I think there's a lot of cases of cancer and diseases being cured with long water baths, but the pharmaceutical companies don't touch it at all, do they? They, they say it's a dangerous thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, for obvious reasons, isn't it? It yeah. comes down to money. It comes down to money. It, it, stop money. If this became widespread, this knowledge, then then the medical industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the, they, they wouldn't collapse overnight, but it would, it would have, a short time, their, their, their revenue streams would, would plummet, yeah. absolutely plummet. And people would be healing it all yeah. over the place. Yeah. yeah. You've also been mixing up some uh, urine therapy, which a lot of people probably don't know much about. Uh, what, what could you say about urine therapy? Well, urine therapy is... It, it, <laughs> It's the number one, it even beats distilled water, uh, urine. <coughs> this is an ancient practice of drinking your own urine. Um, they still do it regularly in India to cure, to cure so many diseases. Um, there, there's plenty of information on this online. When I first stumbled across it, I, I was disgusted by it. I, I looked over, a few years later, I revisited some information. I decided to give it a try for myself as my health was declining and the first the first time you drink it I had a warm glow throughout my body and my body was saying at last I oh, wish you tried this earlier. Because urine's not uh, waste is it? It's like the stuff that comes out of the other orifice is waste but urine's really overflow of nutrients. Yeah 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 everyone thinks that, that both, both the backside and the front side are, are waste <coughs> waste, but they're not. It's just the backside that's waste. The, uh, the the front side, the urine, is is an overflow. Um, the kidneys manage the blood. Basically, urine is is this um, filtered uh, blood. Um, the, uh, the the kidneys pull out the excess nutrients and, and and other elements in your in your blood, which are not needed at that specific time. Yeah, not needed at the time for the organs and. And then, the and then pass them to pass them not to the bowels but to the, but to the bladder yeah. for excretion, which can then be used, reused, drunk. Uh, another um, important point about your urine, drinking your own urine, is that the, the more you drink it, uh, the clearer it gets, the, the less foul tasting it gets. Um, the more pure it gets. It's the more pure, the more soft it gets. It's the most soft liquid. Uh, you can ever drink. Obviously, it's not good to do urine therapy if someone's like drinking a few pints of beer every night. No, no, eating rubbish. It, it all depends. The taste of your urine always depends on what you put into your body. If, you, if you've got a diet of junk food and, and alcohol, and you, and you take a drink of urine, then it will taste disgusting. <laughs>
meaning uh, keeping them not too cold or not too hot, depending on which uh, uh, place uh, the satellite stands along its sun-synchronous orbit. Sometimes the satellite fly in daylight, some satellite fly in eclipse, and you need to make sure that in spite of those very violent uh, uh, thermal environment changes, uh, uh, equipment on board the spacecraft and material remain in a sort of a narrow stripe of temperatures. Okay, so it's a bit like keeping your sandwiches fresh in a summer's day. Yeah. How, what software do you use to stop it bumping into any of the other 20,000 satellites? Alors, how do we avoid collision, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Alors, uh, uh, before launching a spacecraft, uh, you check basically which kind of orbit your mission requires to be optimally delivered to the, to the users. But when this is done, you also check that this orbit would be free from any other user who is already there. Now, when you have selected an orbit which is free of any orbiting object, and we know what are the orbiting object, at least down to a few centimeters uh, uh, of size, uh, because on that we have uh, grand radars and grand telescopes who permanently track the satellite and the debris which are in orbit, then uh, we basically define uh, uh, the real orbit in which we want to fly and we tailor the launcher and the software of the launcher and the launch sequence of that launcher to inject us in this right orbit. When you are in an orbit, you can keep it quite easily stable on that orbit because uh, the behavior of the spacecraft from a flight dynamics point of view is quite predictable uh, and you have a propulsion system on board the spacecraft. We, 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 uh, we embark fuel and with that fuel, we can create some, uh, some thrust in any direction, basically, to uh, 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 apply in-orbit uh, plane maneuvers or out-of-orbit plane maneuvers. And then we can play on inclination and altitude. And then we can this way maintain uh, the orbital uh, behavior of the spacecraft exactly where it should remain. So you can drive it around collisions? Alors, if we, <laughs> if we contemplate the collision with a debris uh, at a moment in time, if we predict that the probability of a collision with this debris number X in the database monitored by radars and telescopes is getting greater than a certain threshold, and of course we can discuss about what the threshold is, uh, then we can maneuver the spacecraft up and down in order to avoid it. So you could, yeah, okay. Uh, and, you... and we do it, huh? uh, What I'm telling is not only a declaration of intent. Uh, <laughs> but it is a situation of debris in the sort of orbit we are flying for us observation the so-called sun-synchronous orbit, uh, uh, leads to okay, a debris avoidance maneuver once every two to three months. What, what, you say you, the satellites use thrusters in space. How the propulsion, yeah. how does that work in a vacuum? Doesn't the vacuum just suck all the fuel out? Uh, alors, uh, it's not a combustion that requires uh, oxygen, of course. Uh, it's a fuel that uh, uh, we, uh, we lead through piping and, uh, and pressure to uh, what we call um, a catalyst. And the catalyst is a chemical body that uh, leads to a deintegration of the fuel into gases. And basically this is the pressure of that gas that escapes the thruster that gives basically the reaction as a force that moves the spacecraft. It's like when you blow uh, in, a, in a balloon uh, and then you pinch uh, the orifice by which you blew, and then you open it, and the balloon moves around in the room. It's you... exactly the same sort of concept. Okay, but with you're affecting the propulsion from Earth, but it's 700 kilometers away, isn't it? You're sending data to something 700 kilometers away up in. Uh, alors, we, we send data from the spacecraft. Actually, the altitude of starting in 2A is 786 kilometers. Yeah, but. How do you send the data to it at 780 uh, kilometers up? We send the data to ground using uh, electromagnetic waves, just like uh, terrestrial radio or Wi-Fi or uh, uh, radio commissions of any kind. Uh, we, we use uh, basically uh, 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 ele electronic modulators to modulate the digital data. And then we amplify these uh, modulated uh, uh, streams of data by very powerful amplifiers that can be the solid state, meaning using transistors, or that can be uh, traveling wave tube amplifiers, uh, which are other, other ways basically to amplify a radio signal to give the necessary power, such as even though it will fade out uh, a sweet course down to the ground station, 
there is still, still enough signal to noise ratio to uh, recover properly all the digital information without any, uh, a, any disruption. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about some photos the satellite took in October. Yeah. Uh, it looks like there's a really good shutter speed because the the set satellite's moving very fast, but the photos don't look blurred. Ah, so, so what you're questioning is basically how we can take very sharp images with the speed of the spacecraft, which is seven kilometers per second in orbit. Yes, and also the altitude is 700 kilometers, but the photos look like they are 50 kilometers. Sentinel-2 has a very advanced instrument. Uh, the, the instrument of Sentinel-2 uh, cost 100 million euros and, and took basically uh, five years and a half to develop. So it's a camera, of course, but it's not the camera you buy from the shop. It's a uh, special camera. It's a special camera. The instrument <laughs> weighs 300 kilograms. Uh, and this instrument is capable, if you want, uh, to take an image which is uh, 300 kilometers wide at granules of 10 meters. And it does this along the capability to capture 13 different colors. So those three parameters are very important. 300 kilometers in terms of width of the image, the, the sort of a tiny detailed restitution, it's 10 meter resolution within 300 kilometers. And then for each of those tiny details of 10 meters, you collect certain different informations called the spectral bands that you could basically visualize as different nuances of colors. Okay? So this is why the images of Sentinel-2 look so, uh, so beautiful, sharp, uh, nice. Now, why it doesn't get blurred when the satellite flies? Because you, you don't need a lot of time to basically capture the photons from the ground with each of the detectors which are embarked within the satellite a few nanoseconds are good enough to basically uh, make the reading which is necessary to restitute pixel by pixel the width of 300 kilometers of that image. So the speed of 7 kilometers per second compared to the tiny time to acquire the information on each of the detectors is irrelevant. It's uh, several orders of magnitude, which is why there is no, no blur in, in what you Ah, the, the speeds are relevant. Voilà. The speed is relevant from a theoretical point of view, but the ratio between uh, 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 the, the time taken to basically acquire the reading on the detector and uh, uh, the, 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 the time uh, uh, caused by the speed between two successive readings uh, make basically the speed uh, uh, not, not fast enough to cause any, uh, any blur. Okay, with, uh, with these photos, there's no photo... The photos look very clear. You cannot see the blue layer of sky because above us is the blue layer, isn't there? It's like 20 kilometers thick. But the photos yeah. don't show the blue layer of sky, even though uh, no, we, the satellite's we, above we have, it. Uh, no, that, that's a very good, uh, a very good remark, actually, that you, that you saw that or you didn't see that, in fact, to, uh, to, to, to say differently. In the 13 bounds of Sentinel-2, we have three bounds to make atmospheric corrections. Atmospheric corrections. We can, we can decouple from the, uh, the photo path, if you want, water vapor, uh, cyruses, and uh, uh, what is the name of those, those small particles, uh, aerosols. You can remove them. Yeah, we can remove them. With the special okay. camera, it sends a beam down and removes the clouds. No, it's not a special camera, it is exactly the same instrument. But in the sum of the spectral bands I mentioned, uh, with the number of 13, you know, those different nuances of colors, three of them are specialized to measure uh, uh, those three quantities that usually degrade the quality of an image. Cyruses, which are thin clouds, water vapor uh, in the atmosphere, you have water vapor, the lower you get into, uh, into the atmosphere, and aerosols. Uh, which are basically very small particles in suspension that can be uh, anthropogenic pollution or natural pollution. Uh, you have aerosol generated by uh, human beings' activities, like cars, but you have as well uh, volcano eruptions that release aerosol in the atmosphere. A and this contributes, of course, to make very, very clear images. Okay. So it's a very, now, very special camera. Have... Very special camera we cannot buy down here, isn't it? 
million dollar camera wow yeah <laughs> so, so you can no you cannot indeed uh, buy it from the from pixmania yeah yeah now, now why you don't see any blue like like, like the sky uh, first of all because you look at the earth you don't look at the sky so the, all the photos uh, taken by sentinel 2 if you want are basically well within the surface offered from the earth uh, but also realize that this camera takes uh, images between uh, uh, specific uh, wave wavelengths and those wavelengths are, uh, are within or, or included within 400 nanometers and 2.5 micrometers yeah well, uh, so this gives you as well the sort of spectrum uh, where we take images of course the spectrum of the human eye is part of the spectrum but the spectrum of something is much wider than what a, new, a human eye yeah is. with so the actually actually when you look at beautiful images on the other website you see only a tiny bit of what this instrument restitutes in terms of information and the users are of course doing much more than looking at those images as we look at it with our eyes with, with good processing you can extract from those images uh, information on vegetation forest crop the nature of the crop uh, which sort of cereal is being grown what is the water content in the cereal what is the uh, um, uh, chlorophyll in there yeah. uh, for, 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 for this uh, uh, crop production and so on and so forth. I've just got one more question. This is more off the record. I was at a Masonic masks party last weekend and a free... You, 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 you were where? A Freemason party with some Freemason friends I have. One of them told me that space doesn't exist and it's all a lie. That's kind of strange, isn't it? When told you that space what? It doesn't exist. This Freemason at the masks party told me that space doesn't exist and there's no satellites. Someone told you that space doesn't exist and there is no satellite? Yes. Why did you ask me those questions then? Just to see what you would say. <laughs> Look, uh, the proof that satellites exist is that I would challenge anyone on Earth to restitute the same photos as Sentinel-2 without launching anything in space. But couldn't they be done with high-altitude drones? Ah, alors, a drone can do as well good imaging of the Earth, of course, but a drone has to fly much lower on, because a drone has to get the atmosphere pressure to get lifted like an airplane. Now, if you fly lower, of course, the width of your image may be much smaller. So when Sentinel-2 takes uh, images of 300 kilometers wide, which means Sentinel-2 can take the, the image of the same zone basically every three days uh, uh, at mid-latitude range above Europe, a drone, uh, uh, you would need to have thousands of them, if not 10,000 of them, to give the same repetition. Mm. Now, now, a spacecraft like SU is also very, very accurately stabilized in pointing. A, a, a drone, I'm not sure it is uh, stabilized sufficiently, this time not to give the blur that you were uh, afraid of before. Mm. And the, the space station, I mean, everyone knows that's not real, don't they? The International Space Station, there's no, that doesn't exist, does it? You mean the space station? That yeah, exist? there's no one on there, is there? That's not, that's definite. Oh, it's a bit funny you ask me those questions. Are, are you a journalist? I am a sort of journalist sometimes. You have even your current uh, British astronaut, Mr. Pitt, isn't it? Yeah. So you don't believe he's standing up there? I was told he's a military, uh, he's a military asset, and he's not actually there. Look, it's a matter of belief, but uh, uh, my religion about space is that it is not a religion, and it exists for real. But have you been uh, there? No, I've not been there, but I've been talking actually to some astronauts who visited us from time to time. But they're all uh, Freemasons. Uh, been supporting uh, uh, industrial development for payloads who are embarked regularly on board the space station. I, I know people who are working with NASA and with the uh, <coughs> Canadian Space Agency on uh, delivering modules to the sure. station. Sure. Uh, so, but you've never uh, seen them be delivered, have you? Sorry? You've never, the other day when they docked with the space station, they ca they said, oh, we've lost video contact. Do you remember? Uh, but, uh, you can create today a virtual world uh, which could basically mimic anything uh, 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 which is delivered by two sensors, two instruments, uh, 
uh, uh, the space station itself. But 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 but, but it's so it, 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 the, the matter is, uh, is is we have a lot of contracts, a lot of people who work, a lot of people we meet, and, and we attend the launches of those things uh, from the launch site. Uh, so we know it happens for real. Things we get launched, know, but it... we also know when there is a failure, how much it costs and, and how much uh, uh, our customers, uh, being political or being private, are disappointed of having uh, basically sunk their money. So uh, from that point of view, I think this economic reaction proves that they exist. Well, there's, a, when you fail, there's a lot of money. You, deliver, you create a lot of damage around you. If there would be virtual creation, there would not be such, uh, such a reaction. But you, but no one's ever seen anything actually go into space. We're taking people's words for it, aren't we, astronauts? I mean, an astronaut that returns to Earth can speak about what he experienced up there. But maybe he's a military asset, or he's a part of the Freemason secret society. Uh, maybe. Uh, 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 look, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely not, not, not convinced about this sort of uh, uh, belief, but anyone is, uh, is allowed to believe what he wants. Sure, sure. One thing I would say is no satellites have taken a, a video of the Earth spinning. Sorry? No satellite has ever taken a video of the Earth spinning. Uh, That's kind of strange, isn't it? I think it is caused uh, by the relative movement between the body from where the image is taken and the speed of the rotation of the Earth. But I think a geostationary satellite cannot do it uh, because it turns uh, uh, exactly at the same speed of the Earth. Uh, and a geostationary satellite should be basically a, a, an element from where you should, as you say rightly, see the Earth rotating. But the problem is the geostationary satellites are uh, located at 36,000 kilometers on the equator and are basically conceived to turn exactly at the same speed of the Earth to remain always on the same position with respect to the Earth. Yeah. Do you, do you believe that they went to the moon in the, in the 60s, Francois? Oh, yes. Uh, of course. There's a lot of ev evidence to suggest this was uh, filmed in Hollywood. Uh, look, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what this evidence is, uh, but, but I, I, I'm working in space since uh, nearly 30 years. But you so, haven't uh, been working in space. You've been working here. Sorry? You've, you haven't been working in space. You've been working here. That maybe there's a military layer that cuts you off from what's really happening. Of course, you can always uh, uh, you can always conceive a conspiracy theory. Sure. Uh, but if you ask me my opinion, I can tell you that this is not the case. Now you, you call me to get one. Uh, one sure, opinion, that's okay? more than so enough. I'm you my opinion. Now, 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 now you can do what you want with your own opinion. Uh, sure. And even change your opinion based on what I'm telling you. But if you don't want to change your opinion, it's your decision. Sure, sure. Anyway, I'll thank you for your time, Francois. I really appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you. Goodbye. Until the kingdom comes, until the race is won.